Hi Anjali, uh, can you hear me Anjali? Yes, uh, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Hi Anjali, hi. Am so I audible, clear? Am I, I audible? Clear. Yeah, okay, okay. So we'll start sharp at 4 p.m. First, we'll play a 30 second video of AVV. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll do the introduction part and then I hand over to you. Yeah, but you play the slide from your side and uh, you I can, uh, I'll tell I you when to change the slide because I am, uh, you never know. Sometimes the connectivity is a problem here. Sometimes. Yes. Sure, sir. Okay. So uh, there are uh, more participants will be coming here or you are going to YouTube live it? So they will be going? coming here. Oh, okay. They, oh, only here, not in the YouTube live is not there. No, sir. No. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. At the end, can you just send me the video uh, later, not now, whenever you have time. Sure, the video sure, of sir. the whole thing. Yeah. Sure. Okay.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Anjali, and I'll be hosting the session today. I'm pleased to welcome you to a new episode of our STEM masterclasses on the topic of design thinking to devise solutions that are simple, productive, and compelling. Before we begin, I would like to provide a few instructions. First, for a better experience, we recommend attending the session through a laptop rather than a mobile phone or tablet. Keep a notepad nearby to jot down relevant notes. Please put your questions in the chat box, which will be addressed during the last 15 minutes of the session. To get the most out of the session, give it your complete attention and eliminate all external distractions. So let's explore today's topic in detail. And we have with us Dr. Prashant Nair. We welcome you, sir. Let me give a quick and brief introduction of our resource person. Dr. Prashant Nair is working as Vice Chairman, IQAC of Amrita Vishwa Vidya Picham Coimbatore, India. He has over 22 years of teaching, research, mentoring, training, consultancy, and academic administration experience. He has taught in academic programs in the USA and Europe at the University of California, San Diego, Sofia University, Bulgaria, and the University of Trento and Italy as an RMS fellow. He has written six books, two edited books, one book chapter, and over 50 publications in reputed journals, books, and conferences. He has mentored his student teams, which have won premier international and national competitions like Smart India Hackathon, Rajasthan Hackathon, and TCS Hackathon. TCS Digital Twin Challenge and represented India as a part of the national hackathon team for the Singapore India Hackathon and were facilitated by the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi. He has also been ranked as a top innovation mentor in India by Atal Innovation Mission and coordinates AIM activities in Tamil Nadu as a regional mentor of change. He has been serving as the Chairman, Vice Chairman, Coordinator of Amrita Deemed University's inter Internal Quality Assurance Cell since 2009, a very sought after speaker by conservative estimates has addressed 1,50,000 students, 
and trained 15,000 plus faculty on technology, innovation, professional bodies, and quality aspects of higher education. Without further ado, I hand over this stage to Sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Anjali, uh, for the very uh, warm introduction. Uh, am I audible to all of you? Yes, sir. Yeah, is it clear? Okay, uh, I hope uh, Devyani ma'am has joined. Uh, very good afternoon to you, Devyani ma'am. Uh, so uh, it's my uh, privilege to be part of this uh, event uh, on behalf of Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pidam with our uh, valued partner, EduDevs, that is hosting this episode. Uh, so it's a it's a uh, really a good uh, nice to be back. Uh, last year we did some uh, workshops on computational thinking, social media, uh, and uh, uh, the like. So it's nice to start twenty twenty three with uh, this event. First, uh, let me wish all the participants, uh, edu devs, and uh, all the participants a very happy and prosperous twenty twenty three. Uh, hope this year is very exciting for each one of you. Uh, so I'll try to uh, demystify uh, the idea of design thinking. It's one of the buzzwords today, uh, but uh, believe me, it's a very simple thing that each one of us has been doing. Well, probably not in a very structured fashion, but in a, in a very informal fashion, each one of us has been doing some kind of design thinking in our lives. Probably we don't know it's uh, that we are doing it. So it's a very simple concept, uh, a very humane concept, which involves empathy and understanding what uh, the needs of the others are. That is the basic gist behind the uh, design thinking. I'll try to demystify uh, design thinking for you. Uh, Anjali, can you play the slides, please? Yes, sir. Uh, is the slide visible for the uh, participants? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. You can move on to the next slide. <laughs> so, next slide. So, we want to build applications and solutions that are simple, user-friendly, easy to use, compelling, innovative, and stuff. Now, how do you build these kind of products or services? Well, the answer is nothing but innovation. Innovation is the answer to building something new, useful, simple, productive, compelling, and so on, creative, and so on. So it is innovation that makes this world go forward. The very idea, innovation comes from the word Latin innovare, which means do something new. When I say something new, it could be a new product, a cure for a pandemic. It could be a new service, a better way to run a hospital. It could be a process, a better way uh, to facilitate patient interaction in the hospital. So innovation is needed for new products, new processes, new services. And unless there is innovation, the world cannot move forward. We need innovation to predict the next landslide predict the next tsunami, predict the next pandemic, and address these issues. So it is innovation. Can you go back? Uh, innovation is the answer to these uh, issues with respect to all, uh, um, uh, you know, moving forward in the world. And today, innovation has become agenda number one, whether it is a country, whether it is an organization, a company, whether it is an individual or a service, whether you, if you are working in a hospital, how do you apply innovation to improve services of the hospital? If you are running an educational setup, how do you innovate for the children, for the students, whether it is a college students or a K-12 school education, you need to innovate. Otherwise, you cannot survive in this world. And today, India is marching ahead in terms of innovation. In the last uh, five years, India has moved uh, to the rank of 40 in uh, the, in the World Committee of Nations for Innovation, uh, something that's very proud. And the, the target is to uh, attain, uh, you know, the top 25 in the next couple of years. Move forward. Thank you. Next slide. So why innovation? 
I already told you, we need we need technology. We need solutions uh, that are simple, compelling, productive, useful. We need to predict the next pandemic. We need to uh, predict the next landslide or natural disaster. So we need, and we are living in a very complex world. Uh, some people refer to this world as what is known as VUCA. VUCA means, uh, VUCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. I think, you know, uh, you will agree with me. Life is like that. Life is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. You cannot predict the things. And in this world, we need innovation to move forward. And this world is further complicated by the fact that, you know, extreme competition, customer is the king. You need the customer. Uh, uh, if you do not do things for your customer, your competitor will take over and you will be, you will vanish out of the business. Competition, globalization, pricing pressures, and the internet and social media. So these are completely change our way of life, our way of thinking, our way of delivery of any product or service. Thankfully, India has really moved up the ladder. Today, we are very proud that India is a nation of startups. We are, you know, uh, we are like the third largest startup ecosystem uh, in the world. And uh, we have 100 plus unicorns uh, uh, Unicorn, as you know, is a company with a valuation of $1 billion. And we have close to 75,000, maybe the numbers are much higher, uh, formerly uh, Indian startups. So India has arrived as a nation in terms of innovation. Now, why design thinking? Design thinking is complementary to innovation. Go to the next slide. So uh, the next slide, please. This is a, the power of uh, innovation. Design thinking complements innovation. If innovation has to be enabled, we need design thinking as an approach, as a methodology, as a framework to drive innovation. And design thinking is very complementary. Now, today, if you see this world, uh, the very interesting, I probably have repeated this once or twice, data is the new oil. The power of data cannot be under um, mind anymore. Data has become the new oil. 100 years back, people were uh, going for an oil rush. They were going to countries or regions where there was oil. You know, uh, California Peninsula, they struck oil. So many big cities like San Francisco, La Los Angeles, San Diego came up, hubs of economic activity because they struck oil. It is subsequently only that, you know, Silicon Valley and Hollywood came. But th that region became prosperous because of oil. Today, data is the new oil. Now, I, just to give you an example, a company called Uber. Uber is the largest automobile company in the world in terms of number of cars and automobiles on the Uber platform. But every day, 20 million rides are happening on Uber. 20 to 20 million rides are happening on a Uber. But none of these 20 million rides, Uber does not own any of these cars. None of these cars for this 20 million rides are owned by Uber. It is owned by some common guy who's having a platform that connects through his mobile or through his device through the Uber app. So see the power of technology. See the power of innovation. Today, Facebook, one, one out of two people on this planet or on this platform is the largest media company in the world. But Facebook does not create any content. The content is created by you, you and me. When we are posting our photographs, videos, our relationship status, or rather our entire life we are posting on uh, Facebook. Alibaba. Alibaba's yearly revenue is 135 billion US dollars, larger than any other retail uh, enterprise in the world. 
But have you ever seen an Alibaba in a, in a mall? You go to any mall in Gurgaon or Delhi or Coimbatore or Bangalore, you will not see an Alibaba shop. It is a pure play online retailer. And they are now the largest retailer in the world, so as to speak. That is the power of innovation. Data and innovation have made these companies simply awesome, simply great. Now, no doubt innovation is the way forward. We have seen this time and again. And design thinking is an excellent framework that drives innovation, that provides a methodology, a framework so as to get innovation. That is the power of design thinking. So let me, let me now dive into the idea that is design thinking. Next slide. <coughs> so what is design thinking? You are trying to find solutions to problems and issues. You are trying to design new products and new services. How do you do it? Well, you, you bank on your past experience. You're a doctor. Just to give you an example, you're a doctor. You have been seeing patients for 10, 10 years. When you see a patient over experience, you observe the symptoms and without taking any test, you diagnose the doctor diagnosis and says, okay, you are having viral fever. Why? It comes from experience. Right? And you know, the doctors, large MOR, what is there in the textbook is one, one part. But a large MOR, a large uh, chunk of the decisions that a doctor takes, the, the deductions that the doctor takes is through experience. Expertise. One, one may be very good in certain things. You build your expertise, you develop your expertise. And using that expertise, you make decisions. You try to solve problems. Judgment. See, sometimes you have to take decisions. You use your judgment. Sometimes you need to do guesswork also. You have to make intelligent guesses. But you use, you rely on your gut. You rely on your judgment and take decisions. And finally, you replicate from other situations. Something worked in one context. Can we replicate that for a success in this field? So these are the typical ways by which we take a decision, by which we address problems and solutions that are there. Now, making this all in a very structured approach, in a very systematic approach is design thinking. You're leveraging your experience, your expertise, your talent, your creativity, your judgment. You're applying some situation that happened, some use case or example into another situation. Well, we are going to do all of these, but this happens through this framework that is known as design thinking. Design thinking provides that framework provides that, uh, uh, that uh, structure, that systematic approach so as to be able to address problems, solve problems, and uh, do it. Let us see how. Well, I'm telling you it is not rocket science. As we move forward, you will appreciate that it is absolute. It is very simple. It is very simple, and it is what we do consciously, albeit in a very uh, informal way. Now we go for a structured way to do this. Please move to the next slide. <coughs> yeah, you can skip this slide. This is a very interesting quote. Next slide. Yeah, very interesting quote. You can just read that. Next slide. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, design thinking is not rocket science. It's a very simple, user-friendly, human-centric approach whereby 
you are focusing on the end user and the customer. Now, if, if, if I give you an example, I am designing a hospital. If I am designing a hospital, I need to consider the, uh, the uh, needs and wants of the stakeholders. Now, in a hospital, who are the stakeholders? Obviously, foremost is the patient. Understand the pain points of the patient. Understand the ideas of the patient. Second stakeholder is obviously doctor and health givers, the nurses. So how do you, how do you go uh, understand their problems, understand their issues? That human-centric approach from a holistic point of view is design thinking. Empathize with the end user empathize with the end user and the stakeholders understand their perspective with a human uh, human centric approach and always have a bigger picture or a holistic view there is a very popular saying see the forest for the trees this is uh, this comes from literature but it uh, we, when we when we teach computing we talk a lot about this see the forest for the trees. We look into minute details. When we want to disturb, when we want to change something, we look into, we want to change one small part. But when we make that change in one part or one component, we have to also understand that change, how it creates or disturbs the entire system so as to speak. So any, uh, they say, you know, any action has an equal and opposite reaction. It comes from physics, very common adage in physics. So you make a change here. How does it affect the other activities? You take a medicine. Whenever you take a medicine, a medicine may come with what is known as side effects. There are always side effects. That is the reaction. So the idea of design thinking is, Whatever we do, we not only consider the effect, we also consider the uh, side effects that are there. We uh, consider the side effects. And that is why we see the forest for the trees. We are focusing on something, but we need to focus on the forest as a whole. We make one change somewhere. It should, we should also ascertain how that change will affect the other aspects, so as to speak. So this is the idea of design thinking. There are several tools, softwares, uh, uh, that tools that help you in this process. So see, let me tell you, it is absolutely not rocket science. This is very simple. Go to the next slide. So the definition is, uh, I'll take the keywords for design thinking. First, it is not a straight line. It is not a linear process. You move from A to B to C to D. That is a straight line. That is a linear process. Design thinking is not a linear process. You may jump from A to B to C, but then you may have to go back from C to A. You have to, uh, based on the feedback. Again, it is an iterative process. You may have to go from A, B, C, D, not one. This series may have to go four or five times. Iteratively, you will have to go. So it's not a linear process. It is an iterative process. It uh, makes you understand the, the, the concerns of the stakeholders and the users. It makes you challenge the assumptions. It makes you do things out of the box. And it helps you to redefine problems and create solutions. So, see, we have always been doing problem solving. Let us be, all of us have been doing problem solving. As a doctor, you have been doing problem solving. As an engineer, you have been doing problem solving. As a, um, uh, as a manager, you have been doing problem solving. As a healthcare worker, you have been doing problem solving. But it is a linear process. You move from one step, next step, next step, next step. Sometimes there is a problem, but it's too late. You can't go back. You can't revert back because you have already moved 
very much ahead in the process. Well, design thinking questions that approach, that linear approach. From A, you go to B, and from B, you go to C, and you go from C, you go to D. Now, from A, you go to B, you go to C. From C, you may have to come back again to A. From D, you may have to come back to B. And this process may happen many times over because of the feedback from the users and the stakeholders. Number two, you also question, uh, you question the status quo. You question the status quo in the sense that you always think for out of the box solutions. I'll come to some examples at the end of my talk. So some of the things that happen in design thinking is immersion. You immerse yourself into the stakeholder. You become the stakeholder. You shadow the stakeholder. If you are making a hospital solution, you be like the patient. You act like the patient. You shadow the patient and immerse into his activities. Second thing is collaboration. Problem solving through immersion, problem solving through collaboration. Every stage you take feedback. You get collaborate with all the stakeholders, get their inputs, get their feedback. And finally validate, check, test it, prototype, make a model and check it again and again. So these are the three major activities that happen during the process of design thinking. Immersion, collaboration and validation. In a linear step, we do not spend much time. We do not immerse ourselves much. We talk to the stakeholders, get some inputs, and based on that, we, we start developing. We may or may not be collaborating. At least today, what is happening in many of the software development projects that are happening, collaboration is good, validation is good, but the immersion part in terms of the, the understanding the needs of the customer may not be all that good. And uh, that is why you don't get perfect solutions or perfect hardwares or softwares. So design thinking is questioning that approach. And uh, again, I'm repeating, it is not linear. No, it doesn't go from A, B, C, D. From A, you, uh, from A, you may jump to D. From D, you may jump back to B and so on. And again, you repeat this many times over iteratively. You question the past. You question the assumptions. You look for new things. You redefine, discuss, collaborate, validate. So this is a new approach or framework that so as to speak. Next slide, please. <coughs> Again, some of the uh, keywords. Design thinking needs inspiration, ideation, and implementation. In addition to immersion, collaboration, validation, some more things that are unique to uh, design thinking are inspiration, ideation, and implementation. Let me tell you all our normal problem solving. We do not have so much of these things. There may be some inspiration. There may be some, some kind of ideation. There may be a good ex execution, but we do not dive so deeply into these uh, uh, activities like immersion, collaboration, validation, inspiration, ideation, implementation. It is very deep in this uh, aspect, which is known as design thinking. Next slide, please. So the, the, the skip one once more, just go once more, once more enter. Next slide. <coughs> this is the sequence of the design thinking. Well, we do uh, at least the uh, we do when we are doing a normal problem solving paradigm we do limited uh, limited uh, empathizing we do defining of a problem statement we do some ideation we do prototyping we do testing but normal problem solving is a straight line is a pure straight line over these pages, stages where empathizing is very minimal. Defining also is less. Ideation may or may not be there. You know, in a startup and all, ideation is very much there. 
prototyping also will be there and testing will be there. But the focus here, you will see that the arrows are moving here and there. You will see that an arrow is jumping back from testing to defining. You are seeing an arrow that is moving from prototyping back to ideation. You are seeing an empathizing jumping to prototyping, not going through defining and ideating. Well, this answers the idea of design thinking. It is non-linear. It is uh, it is non-linear. It is um, uh, iterative. It is not in a sequence. You make jumps round the way as per the situation and moving forward. Now I will explain you what each of these stages are in detail. But I can at first look itself. I can tell you in a normal problem-solving paradigm, the empathize and the define are very very less or inadequate, or they are done very quickly. They are not done in a very extendable ma manner as the concept of design thinking. Whereas ideation, prototyping, testing may be happening everywhere. But here, the focus is on the empathize and the define to a large extent, to a large uh, measure as compared to the normal problem solving process. Go to the next slide. There is some delay in the movement, I think. Next slide, please. Let us see the first stage, empathy. Empathy means you feel for somebody else. You put yourself in the shoes of that person and behave as though you are that person. That is the idea. Now, let me tell you, uh, in a most problem-solving paradigms, this does not happen. You are developing a library information system. I'm talking, I'm putting on the door, my hat of a computer engineer. I am developing a library information system. I go to the library. Okay, dude, give me, show me your library. Okay, uh, show me the rules of the library. He'll give me a printout. I ask him a few questions. I understand the existing system. Okay, TK, now I will make your software. That is the normal. This is called requirement elicitation or understanding uh, what a library is functioning so as to develop the library information system. Believe me, this is what I would do if I were a software developer or a software engineer. I'll go to the library, visit the library, understand the library processes, understand the paperwork that is there so that I can convert it into a computer asks the librarian a few questions. Are, hey, kya hai, wo kya hai? Can you tell me uh, how it is? Okay, show me the business rules. Uh, he'll give me a printout. End of the story. This is the normal process when somebody goes for a, uh, understanding the problem. But empathize is totally different. Empathize is you're putting yourself in the shoes of the stakeholder. Meaning, Rather than ask these questions, you will say to the librarian, okay, I'm going to build a system for you. You don't tell me anything. You keep quiet. You do your work. You do your work. I will sit with one day and observe what you are doing. I will shadow you. You don't tell me anything. I will shadow you and understand what you are doing. And then through that shadowing, through that immersion, through that process, you understand how the library works. What is the workflow of the library? What is the idea? What are the pro business processes that are happening in the library? How a book is taken? How a book is returned? Now, again, the library, there will be some issues happening. Somebody will come and say, uh, sir, this fellow says that he lost the book. What should I do? A librarian will say there is a process for that. You have to pay a fine. See, like that. You sit with the librarian, immerse with him, with him or her, shadow the librarian, understand how the library works. Doesn't it make sense? Will you not get an undiluted, un, um, undiluted, pure view of the library rather than he giving you his opinion? You can definitely take his opinion. Doesn't hurt. Not over. Librarian is only one stakeholder. There are other stakeholders also. Students, faculty, shadow them, sit with them. 
maybe you cannot shadow them all the time but at least sit with them understand how a student is going through the process of taking a book understand how a student is moving across the library and scanning the titles understand how a faculty is collecting data for doing a research this is the idea of empathize put yourself in the shoes of the stakeholder understand their issues next slide please listen engage observe survey when you are immersing yourself when you are shadowing yourself you listen you engage observe survey view the problem from the perspective of the end user understand the pain points that are there the existing system will have some problem some or some days you will find out uh, now uh, uh, four o'clock there is a big rush in the library why is this happening because classes are there till four o'clock all the students will come to the library at four then there will be a big rush for uh, in the library to return and take give books and again the rush there will be a hurry there will be a lot of hangama the reason is the five o'clock the college bus will go typical situation don't we see this kind of situations but if you empathize uh, in the framework of design thinking you understand the perspective of all the stakeholders by sitting with them listening to them engaging with them uh, observing what they are doing surveying what they are doing understand the problem from their perspective understand the pain points that are there you have a much better insight into the whole problem this does not happen in normal problem solving we ask the stakeholder some questions we understand some systems we elicit the requirements and then we move on this is what actually happens in all the problems of design thinking changes that human centric approach focusing on the customer on the user human centric approach next slide please there are various tools that we can use for uh, this this is a very simple tool there are tools like miro m i r o uh, some part of it is free and out uh, open source i went through this training uh, through niti ayog and iit delhi miro tool will help you to make these kind of empathy maps like that there are many maps that you can create use case personas persona the library persona student persona the um, faculty persona research pr persona how do what is the thinking of this uh, in the empathy map you you get this kind of uh, idea what is the person thinking and feeling what does this see what is this what is he hearing what does he uh, do why what does this person do according to a situation you write and build empathy maps you will find out frustrations you will find out aspirations see you sit with the librarian shadow him now there is one problem here when you shadow him he should not feel he or she should not feel too conscious of the fact that you are shadowing that that is a very critical thing you have to tell him you know you do your job i am trying to improve you you don't bother whether i am there i am invisible consider that i am invisible this is again a problem but A, a smart person, a smart design thinker, can nicely build an empathy map based on this uh, shadowing and observing the people, feeling, engaging, listening, surveying, talking. All this will get a very good empathy map. So, for each persona, you build an empathy map for all the stakeholders. That is the first step in the concept or the problem of uh, the. the uh, concept of design thinking let believe me we do not do this in any problem solving technique next now you know all the personas all the stakeholders you know you understand their problems you understand their aspirations you understand their positives you understand their pain points now it is easy to define a problem statement now you are de defining the problem statements based on your user needs and problems which you have collected and gathered through shadowing and through immersion through empathizing this is something 
um, uh, that you have done very extensively. So you build what is known, you define a problem statement based on this multiple user needs and problems and aspirations. Next slide. Now, when you are talk, when you are talking about defining, you have gathered information, you have understood each person's experience, you have understood each person's likes and dislikes, you have understood each person's aspirations and pain points. Now you need to modulate this. Modulate this such that you arrive at a problem statement. So crowd isn't there and the library is having huge crowds. That is a problem. You need to solve the problem of uh, crowds in the library. Now everybody agrees. Librarian agrees. Yeah, yeah, sir. There is so much of crowd in the library. Student says, sir, I have classes till 4 o'clock. The only time I go is 4 to 5. I have to go to library, take books and study for the next day test. But there is a big crowd. Faculty will complain. Are, when I go to the library, I, I, don't get out, I don't go to the library because there is so much of crowd. See, see, three people have given three different, three views of the same perspective. Same perspective. So now you know you have the data, you have collected the data, you have got their persona, you have got their clear thinking and now you define what is known as a problem statement. Next slide. Consolidate the information, analyze your observations, synthesize your observations to ally with the core problems and define the clear problem statement which covers all the stakeholders. Next slide. Now, so uh, empathize and define. In uh, design thinking, we are spending a lot of time. Normal problem solving paradigms, we do not spend that much time. We, do a, we, do, we don't spend so much time on empathizing. We don't spend my time on uh, define. But in, in uh, design thinking approach, we are spending much more maximum amount of time on these two aspects. Now, the other stages are probably, you know, uh, common to the uh, problem solving approach. But the, the big difference is that the first empathizing and defining, we are spending much more time as compared to uh, this um, uh, we are co as compared to this um, uh, ideation and the other steps. So you have empathized, you have understood all the users, you have got their persona, you have understood their likes and dislikes, you have got their aspirations, their plans, their views, their pain points. You have defined a problem from all the stakeholders. You have made a clear and concise problem statement. Now you ideate towards creating solutions. This is the third step, ideation. How do you now gather? Uh, you have understood the problem statement. It is very clear. You have, you have uh, the problem statement has come from all the stakeholders. Now, how do you ideate for a solution? Well, here again, there is a slight change in the approach. Go to the next slide. Here, in ideation, unlike the normal problem-solving paradigm, you think for many number of solutions, not for a single solutions. In the earlier ideation is, okay, you understood a problem, you find an idea, you solve it. Here, the, it is, uh, the, uh, the design thinking approach teaches you to uh, have multiple ideas and solutions. Challenge the existing status quo. Challenge the ideas. Think out of the box. Look for all different alternate ways of solving a problem in terms of a 360 degrees view. And then you ideate for the best solution for uh, the, the best solution for this problem. Right? So how do you, uh, how are you able to, uh, you know, you have so many different uh, perspectives. You have so many different ideas. You list, do, do not throw out a single idea. Take all the ideas. Each idea is taken. Each idea is considered. 
each uh, idea is considered with respect to the problem so that is one way you will be able to list down so many ideas now how do you choose the best solution i give you a very simple example you are having an interview tomorrow uh, you have to go from say chandigarh to delhi for an interview interview is at 9 o'clock okay you are extremely busy you take a early morning flight from chandigarh to delhi you reach airport at 8 o'clock uh, directly you go to the venue of the uh, interview from chandigarh to delhi now this is a very uh, good this is a very good solution you are not you are you are not spending any time the whole day you are getting the day before early morning only you are traveling to delhi you are taking the first flight out of delhi uh, you are reaching in time for the interview but now i do not need to tell you about the problem of fog in delhi it's very cold and there is fog if it is foggy your flight can get delayed the uh, and mind you you are starting early morning maybe 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock if the flight gets cancelled there is no way you will be able to drive and attend the interview in delhi so what do you do the the best solution is uh, without wasting time going early morning but in this situation in this context that may not be a good solution the best thing is to go the day before drive to delhi uh, chandigarh to delhi take an accommodation with a friend or a relative and go early morning for this thing so many solutions many ideas will come many solutions and ideas will come do not discount any idea take each and every idea list down all the ideas list down the ideas which are out of the box which are not normal which are completely outside and then take the best decision on which idea to select so you here you are again focusing on many potential ideas and solutions not one you are having so many ideas now let me tell you many of the uh, top companies uh, tell that um, most of their biggest innovations have come not from regular uh, exercises but brainstorming out of the box you know something that uh, i uh, this is a little deviation but i will definitely uh, uh, tell you all of us use iphones right apple iphones do you know uh, 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 apple iphone has a single button right a single button and you slide to open many of us don't know that this single button was a wild idea that happened in apple it was a wild idea at that point of time any mobile phone had you know minimum it used to have 10 digits you know 0 to 9 because you have to type a number you need 0 to 9 digits so you need nine buttons on the mobile phone to talk but the iphone has a single button you uh, you click the button you get the screen now let me tell you this was not at all an idea that came for the uh, for the phone it was a wild idea suggested by somebody to steve jobs wild idea but somehow and the interesting thing is that this idea of a single button uh, was entire apple board was also against this idea they were telling this is not going to work this is not going to buy fly but somehow steve jobs knew okay this is going to fly because he 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 uh, he told this incident or as simplicity is the ultimate sophistication i will repeat simplicity is the ultimate sophistication people want things simple rather than having a bulky phone with dials i'll rather have a single button and a screen comes i can use the screen to watch movies today the rest is history today you tell me which phone doesn't come with single button so see a wild idea which was brainstormed from somewhere was uh, employed in such a situation and the rest is history so that kind of approach is also needed for the uh, ideation 
do not discount a single idea all the ideas are listed all the ideas are evaluated for their merit and then we choose the best possible idea for the situation that we are in go to the next slide now the next stage is prototyping prototype is a scaled down version a model uh, a model a scaled down version of the actual thing it's a scaled down you don't build the whole thing you make a small model of the actual thing so that you give the feel to the user i will give you an example you are building a big uh, house you are building a house house you, you will be spending 50 lakhs on building the house but to uh, with a new design but to give the house owner a feel you build a small model and see this is how the look house looks like why you can go one step uh, uh, higher better and you can instead of making a model you can make an online virtual reality where you are putting your putting your uh, phone or putting some glasses or and you can go into the house and see what is happening all these are prototypes prototypes are where you are making a small scaled down model of the actual thing and showing it to the customer to the end user to the stakeholder so this is what i am going to build is this okay just give me your feedback this is a good uh, this is what i am planning to build this is what i am planning to do can you give me your feedback and then the user will get a feel of the actual thing mind you it is not perfect it's only a scaled down model it's only a prototype it's a working model it's not perfect but just to get a feel of or some people say a proof of concept that is also a kind of a prototype next slide please so prototyping is making a solution making a a, a simple solution a a, a model uh, a model of the actual thing and giving the customer the end user a feel of that design thing of course prototyping is also there in normal problem solving as i mentioned empathizing and i have uh, empathizing and defining we are spending much more time in design thinking that normal problem solving ideation we are doing in problem solving but here there is a little different approach you are taking all the ideas and prototyping is there everywhere even in normal problem solving you make a scaled down experimental version show it to the customer and you will get the flaws of the whole thing now i, I i'm just giving you an example you know in uh, many a time you know this plastic surgery right some people try to uh, make their face beautiful by you know nip and tuck doing plastic surgery and you find out that the final result is so bad right because you know the the probably what they have been the the model or the face that was shown in the computer to them did not match the actual thing but uh, maybe that was not done somebody would have to do this job and then now when you find out it becomes very bad but if you have a prototype a software that will show you exactly how you look when you do this plastic surgery i mean it's nothing like that today uh, you know when you want to uh, select a glass lens cart and all no you can put your face and put the glass try out different glasses and uh, see that is also a simple prototype right a simple prototype so you get a feel i'm just giving you a a plausible example and a prototype will be able to expose the weaknesses and flaws in your solution next slide finally testing testing is also there in normal problem solving you make a prototype you show it to the customer customer is happy uh, customer suggests some changes again make the changes and finally test it out test it out in the sense that take the design to the users implement it start testing get their feedback and when you do the testing validate what you have developed obviously when you have used this uh, use this uh, normal problem solving approach i will tell you the problem when you reach the testing stage you find out that some cases you have built a product that nobody wants people are not happy it's too late 
now you can't go back but when it comes to uh, uh, this approach of design thinking you are not in such a disadvantage because you have spent lot of time on empathizing you have spent lot of time on defining the problem statement you have spent a lot of time on ideation where you have many other ideas many ideas are there not one you have chosen an idea now that idea you prototype you tested you found out it is failed it is very easy to go back to the ideation and select an alternate idea and implement prototype it implement it and test it so you are actually saving time and you are making something that the customer wants now that is the final uh, stage of uh, um, uh, design thinking and in this testing phase even if there is a problem it's not a big you will not be losing a lot of resources in going back because you already have so many ideas any one of the ideas you take okay the customer did not like this fine tell the hey let me go back to the other idea alternate idea prototype it again show it to him they are not going to spend much time or money because you have already developed those ideas also that is the concept or the idea of design thinking like i mentioned it's not rocket science it is very simple consciously or unconsciously we may be doing it right when we are building a house uh, you know we we are asking all the members of the family what do you want what do you want unconsciously we may be doing a part of it but then this is a very structured approach where we are spending more time on the empathizing on the defining the problem on the ideation and less time uh, on the prototyping and the testing normal problem solving you are spending very little time on empathizing and uh, defining here you are spending more time that is the difference go to the next slide next slide please it's not moving yeah so that's what i was trying to tell you next slide next slide yeah next slide i I'll, i'll stop with a couple of solutions one is uh, ge healthcare uh, who has uh, how they have employed uh, uh, design thinking in uh, so the, as you know ge healthcare is very famous for diagnostic imaging and uh, many a time they found that children pediatric patients were uh, were crying uh, you know uh, when you are taking x rays when you are taking doing laser uh, radiation and all that it's a painful process for children they start wailing crying they don't like the dark dungeon like rooms so this was a big problem for ge so ge did uh, talk to lot of children talk to experts and uh, also interviewed the the hospital staff not the doctor because the the radiographer who sits in the uh, in the radiology department doing the uh, what is that the scanning or the x ray technician knows better than the doctor how the child is feeling so they did this exercise and they did uh, uh, you know pirates of the caribbean kind of adventure for an mri machine children were super happy the mri room was not a dark black uh, dungeon but rather now it looked like a pirate ship uh, you know pirates of the caribbean johnny depp you can meet children are super happy and uh, the, there was a tremendous improvement in the pediatric wards because of this process uh, this design thinking approach by ge healthcare for pediatric patients this is a true example next slide next slide oral b so oral b is uh, pretty common in us and all you have electronic uh, electric toothbrushes you know uh, you just uh, put some charge and you use so these electronic uh, electric toothbrushes had a lot of add ons like you know brushing frequency gum sensitivity music and so on but they found out that the users don't want those things design thinking approach they were not selling that many electric toothbrushes so what they found out from the design thinking approach empathizing uh, defining statement ideation prototyping and testing was that it is very uh, all these add ons are not needed they don't need it electric toothbrush if it is easy to charge especially when traveling which i don't want to know my gum sensitivity i maybe one out of 100 will want to know i don't want to i don't care about my brushing frequency i'd rather have a simple toothbrush that i can put it into my travel bag 
easily charge and move along this is what found out they found out and they uh, simplified the uh, oral b to electric toothbrush and now i think uh, this helps them a lot the uh, uh, design thinking helped them a lot next slide i think i'll close with this the next slide next slide airbnb again uh, airbnb is you don't want to go to costly hotels when you are moving you can uh, rent what is known as an airbnb room where there is just bed and uh, breakfast may not be there just bed you take somebody's apartment stay there for the day and night go for sightseeing and come but uh, what was find they found out was that existing audience was not using their services the reason was that uh, airbnb the pictures that were uploaded on the airbnb my service apartment this is the picture based on that you can go online and uh, choose the room they found out that those pictures were very poor quality and uh, only when you have nice pictures people will only uh, want to drop a hotel and go to a service apartment on airbnb if you get the feel now if you see airbnb agoda and all you'll see that even though the room is uh, you know the room photographs are super and i must also uh, caution you that what you see in the picture online may not be as good as when you go there let me be very honest at least in europe i had that bad experience what i saw in the picture on airbnb was beautiful it looked very nice and spick and span but when when i went there the room was chalta hai almost similar but outside and all it was not that good so those kind of issues are also there but airbnb has also used this design thinking for this so uh, i think that's all uh, from my side uh, uh, i'll be happy to answer any questions if you have i'm so i think i have i made yeah i have uh, finished on time uh, so uh, i'll be happy to answer any questions if you have thank you very much uh, thanks to edu devs uh, on behalf of amrita and uh, edu devs uh, thanks to the participants happy to answer any questions over to you anjali <coughs> <laughs> I so, think there are something in the chat. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just reading that. So, sir, would like to ask, uh, how can we apply design thinking process in our day-to-day -day teaching? Act, kindly suggest some activity. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a very good question. In in terms of teaching, uh, so uh, again, it it depends to a large extent on the kind of course that you are doing. so uh, let us take a a course i don't know let us take chemistry for that matter okay chemistry i'm not a chemist but i'm assuming chemistry is having a lot to do with uh, you know uh, using beakers pipettes doing mixing and stuff like that now first step is when you have completed a course ask the students about the pain points how they felt during the course how they felt the difficulty in this get their suggestions that is one step now you can also take other um, other suggestions from other educators of the course in um, uh, in chemistry and that way you get the feedback and uh, maybe the first the first iteration may not be perfect second iteration what you can do is when this course is going on you take this feedback and try to make some changes here you can uh, in this uh, second iteration you can do some shadowing some uh, immersion finding out how the children are mixing and all and then thereby you can improve on the second iteration third iteration will be perfect <laughs> this is the only way so it's a to some extent it is a trial and error there is no other way because it's a teaching thing you know you can't stop teaching right so but this trial and error approach definitely helps because i am telling you many students come and say uh, especially when you have uh, Uh, students are now very smart you know immediately they will tell you you know they have a problem uh, when we have mid course you know in uh, we have what is known as class committee meetings in between the semester A student will tell you openly that you know sir your what your assignments are very abstract i am not able to understand your slides you are not able to do this properly but the challenge is get those inputs then try to shadow them you know see uh, ask somebody else to attend the class like an observer so these are simple things whereby you can 
do some kind of design thinking in the classroom. But I I've not done it in a very uh, extensive way. But this is probably the way. So one question I would love like to ask. So can you please explain the relationship between design thinking and entrepreneurship? So entrepreneurship depends upon innovation. Today, uh, you know, see. Uh, today it is uh, it is a it is not a seller's market. Now I know when I was in school, uh, I was very proud that going to school in an ambassador, right? That time an ambassador and the Fiat were the only cars that were available in the market. So I was very proud among the few people where a driver drives me to school. I feel so proud. It's a little snobbish, but I'm just telling you. So that time there was no good, no way. You have to go only for ambassador or Fiat. I think you have to wait for five years, ten years to get an ambassador and fit. Today is that the case? Today it's a buyer's market, right? I want to buy a, a an SUV. I have ten different SUVs. I, I can go to any shop, ask them. Maybe they may tell uh, two weeks, three three weeks. Within one or two weeks, they will give you the car. So today, the business, uh, the the market has moved from a, a seller's market to a buyer's market. If you do not innovate, you will not. You will be out. Entrepreneurship is completely dependent on innovation. If you are not able to make innovative products and services, nobody will come to you. Your they will go to your competitors. And what does design thinking helps you to innovate your products and services as per the needs of the customer? So that is a link between uh, entrepreneurship and design thinking. Thank you so much, sir. That was such an awesome webinar, and thanks for answering those questions. We are happy to announce the overwhelming response to our STEM at NEP 2020 series. Stay tuned with us for our upcoming STEM episode. The topic is AI in education. Please note down the date, which is 17 January. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure to have you with us here. and i thank all our participants who are present here and taking out time from their busy schedules to be here today thank you so much sir thank you yeah thank you thank you uh, wish the all the best to the participants thank you and uh, best wishes to devyani ma'am i don't know if she's there i thought i saw her message thank you ma'am thank you sir Thank <laughs> you.